of the city of Lagos points at God as all Be the first to know from the north, south, east, west, and around Africa. We break the news. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news breaks. We are Call TV News. Welcome to Call TV. Twin for our news station. Hello there, thank you for joining us on Cool Digest this beautiful Tuesday morning. It's just a few hours before Nigeria clocks 54 and I understand what would be happening today if it were to be your own bath, uh, birthday. Possibly you be getting prepared to celebrate, you know, bake the cake and get a show and be in all of that. So I also would employ you as a patriotic Nigeria to get set to celebrate Nigeria at 54. Now the question that comes to mind immediately is what is in there to celebrate? Our Facebook page and our Twitter account will come on the screen in the course of this show and we'll love to hear you how you will describe your their country at 54. Of course state of the nation as Nigeria clocks 55 is going to be the focus of our show from today and almost throughout the week. But on the show today we'll also be opening the page to find out what is transpiring in AKT State, what is now being described as the uneasy cam. Last week on Monday, it was drama at the Federal High Court in Ado AKT, the state capital, where a judge was allegedly beaten up by some political thugs. Of course, you heard about the record book of this particular judge turn. A particular judge was slapped and this court was torn and all of that. And then the uh, all of that climaxed on Thursday with the death of the NURTW chairman in Adoe Kitty, who was said to be a staunch supporter of the governor-elect Ayodele Fayoshi. I we're going to find out what the two Stakeholders in this issue are talking about uh, the incumbent governor as well as the governor elect in AKT State. And we'll be back with you as we intend to put a call across to the spokesperson of the APC in AKT in the name of GDR Ware and, of course, the CPS to the governor elect. We'll be back with you shortly. Don't move a muscle. Ayofayo she should be solely and primarily held responsible for what is happening in the state. This state has witnessed an unprecedented level of peace over the last four years. I will continue to accord that office all the respect and I will not want to join issues with him. So, but I don't want to join issues like I said. He owns his mouth to run it if he wants to run it. You understand? All right, thank you for joining us again. Of course, the stakeholders there talking about what transpired in AKT in the preceding week and, of course, telling us their own position as regards the AKT crisis. We, uh, we're going to be joined very shortly now by the chairman of the All Progressives Congress in AKT State by the name GDI, where to find out what exactly he has for us and what is the position of that political party as regards the crisis in that state. Okay, we're joined now by Jide Awe. He is the chairman of the All Progressives Congress in AKT. Hello, Jide, how are you there? Yes, how are you? I'm fine. You're welcome to Call That's Digest. Hello, are you there? Exactly, you're on to call TV News live from Lagos. What exactly is the position of the APC in AKT as regards the crisis that rocked that state last week? The position of APC. Well, we were surprised at the same time embarrassed with what actually happened. Because right away from Monday, last week, when the Normal court and the tribunal were disrupted both Monday and, uh, and Thursday. Hello? I'm with you. Go ahead, GD. The APC as a party, we don't have any inkling to what actually happened. The embarrassment aspect of it was on Friday morning. When our secretariat was bumped down, took a long time with the campaign office of Dr. Kao, the fire We have placed it on record and I'm repeating it now. We were no party to all those things. We were not in the court premises. 
if only our lawyers were there. The first case involving A11 was not a decisive case. The tribunal case, we couldn't get there because the place was tampered uh, by all sorts of people. I would believe that uh, court premises is a secret place, which is meant for judges, lawyers, and litigants. So the eruption that took place, both at the court and at the outside later, was an embarrassment to us. And particularly the death of uh, Omolafe, which in any case has nothing to do with ATC in a given state. Because of the best of my knowledge, we have no axe to ground with Omolafe and his group. But we are also, there are also reports, Jide, as regards the chairmanship of the NURTW in that state, which happens to be between someone who is a supporter of the governor-elect and the other person who supports the incumbent governor. How do you react to that? Well, these are associations, world transport unions. I believe they too may have support for one person or the other. But what I'm saying as a party, as a political party, APC in a kitty state, we are no party to any of them. The records are there to show. We have nothing to do with what NURT or national or whatever that we regard them as unions and associations within the state. Individuals among them may have interest in one thing or the other. But for PDP now to allege that uh, uh, NDC masterminded the killing or the riots that actually occurred in the Kitty State, if you look at the Genesis right away from the courtroom to outside, you will know that NDC did not, well, did not mobilize and have no association whatsoever with all this. It's all right. Let me quickly take you back to the aftermath of the election in Ekiti. The incumbent yeah. governor came out less than 24 hours after election to congratulate Ayodele Fayoshe. Yeah. Why did APC turn back on that decision by going to court? You see, uh, Dr. Kao me at the statesman, as the governor of the he had the right to maintain peace, law and order within the Kitty State. He, as a governor, he congratulated the so-called winner, so to say. That is he, as the governor of the state. The party at the headquarters and also at the state level, we believe that there are so, so many things that were wrong with that election, which needs to be re-examined. And like we have been saying all along, uh, electoral process does not end at the voting alone. Uh, tribunal is still part of electoral process. So if I support in the process to logical conclusion, I don't think as a party we have done something wrong. It's all right, Jide. Uh, we understand that the thank you tour of Dr. Kyle Defiami has been suspended because of yeah. the crisis in the state. But what can yeah. you say about the transition? you know, between the APC government to the PDP government come October 16. Oh, well, you have said it all, that his uh, thank you to has been suspended because of the situation in the state. The don't-to-don't uh, curfew has been imposed in a Kitty state. Having over transition or no transition is within the government's purview. As a party, we are in tribunal, we are in court, to find out what actually wrong with that election. And I believe what has happened on Monday and Thursday should not disturb the process. So transition or not transition, I have no absolute statement on that. It but, is a government issue. Okay. Uh, we're rounding up with you, Jide. I just wanted to confirm, as the spokesperson for... AKT State APC, what exactly are you foreseeing come October 16? Is the APC ready now to hand over to the PDP in AKT? Well, as I've told you, we have gone to tribunal. The government and the governor have set up a transition period or a transition committee. If the disruption that happened did not hamper all those processes, I believe, come October 16, what should be done will be done. 
It's all right. Thank you very much, Didi Awe, for joining us. We hope to keep you. Uh, Thank you very much. We hope you keep us up to date with events as they unfold, Didi. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, that's the APC chairman, Ikita State, by the name Didi Awe. Uh, there's another stakeholder in all of these, of course, is the chief press secretary to the governor elect of AKT, uh, Ayodele Fayoshi, by the name Idowu Adelusi. Now, Idowu Adelusi, we spoke with him earlier today, and he told us that he has to confirm with the governor elect to know whether he would be on the show this morning. So, we hope to hear from him anytime from now. Just keep your hands crossed. Well, back to our studio, uh, we have a legal practitioner here with us, Fred. Zeko, happy Independence to you. Happy Independence to you. <laughs> and, good, morning. Uh, good morning. Happy Independence to all Nigerians mm. and uh, lovers of our uh, well wishers of our great country. Nigeria. What should the feeling be like? I said earlier that if it were to be your birthday, I don't know yes. how old you are, but you look yeah. a bit above 54. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> by the grace of God, I am. Uh, Celebrating with my country. Oh, oh, yes, that's that's lovely, and I'm sure you're rolling out. I'm am, am celebrating with my country. Well, mm. the entire country should be celebrating, mm. uh, because um, despite the challenges that we've had for the past 54 years, um, Nigeria is at least if we don't celebrate anything, let us celebrate the wonderful things God has done for this country. Mm. God has been so so magnanimous, so so generous. So, so graceful, so, so benevolent, so good to us as a nation, giving us every resource that we need mm. to live well. Mm. Every resource, even though we, our leaders cause a lot of infractions and um, we, con we cannot but continue to ask for God's mercies okay. so that he doesn't withdraw his grace from us. State of the nation as Nigeria Clock 54, we are going to a kitty now, yes. what is now being described as the uneasy cam. But, but let me take you first from the judiciary angle of all of this. Ayodele yes. Fayashe, the governor-elect, is in court for two cases. One, a group is saying, is talking about his eligibility to contest for that election that gubernatorial election, AKT. The other group, of course, the APC, is saying that is is also contesting the credibility of that election that brought him to power. Could any of these cases, could they have had any sure verdict before the October 16 transition in AKT? I'm going to look at it um, very clearly. The group that is asking, that is challenging fire shares eligibility to stand the election mm is called E11. Yeah. That E, I believe, stands for Ekiti. Ekiti 11, a group of people um, who uh, you can easily call them the elite. It's an association of people who felt either the first should not be their next governor. The other group that is asking, that uh, querying the, the credibility of the election, is uh, a political group that took part in that election, and that is uh, All Progressive Congress, APC. There are two different issues, but they are pursuing virtually similar goal. And what is the goal? The goal of, of ensuring that uh, the governor-elect, Ayodele Fayoshe, does not get to be sworn in and does not get to lead Ekiti. Mm -hmm. come October 16. Now, the legal angle to it is that the activity of APC is legally right. Okay. And because the party, if the party says they, they, they saw infractions in the electoral process and that they wanted to, rem, to, to appeal, uh, to approach the tribunal, for remedy, restitution, annulment, cancellation, whatever. Mm -hmm. It is their legal right, provided not only by the Constitution, but also by the Electoral Act. The other group that call themselves E11 is a group that we can call in law meddlesome interlopers. Mm, what does that mean? They are meddling into an issue that does not concern them. Mm. Yes, you can say that they are equity people and therefore they have stake in equity. But there's what we call 
lashes and acquiescence in law. Inequity, he who sleeps over his right, may wake up too late to find out that his right has been swept away. And that's exactly what has happened to this group. This group of elite, the people who were there when Fayoshe was warming up to contest for election at primary level, they did not approach the court. The PDP, as a political party, selected Fayoshe by their primary election to flag their flag, to fly their flag. They didn't go to court. INEC presented Fayoshe as a candidate for the party, for the general election, for governorship. They didn't go to court. Fayoshe went to the election and he was declared winner. They didn't go to court immediately. Some days to the swearing in, some call it some weeks, they now approach the court to challenge eligibility, which is fundamental to his being the next governor. So I think one. There's, they a, came, time, there's a time of filing the case. It is very important. They came okay. too late in time. Mm. That is one, morally and legally. Two, they don't have any right by law to determine who becomes the next governor of the state. They don't. If they had approved the court on time, it is the court that will determine that. And the court will not even determine that without consideration to all other issues. The authority in this country that has right by law to stop anybody from running an election is INEC. Mm. The court can do that, but that is working in tandem with INEC. All those things do not take place, and they have just approached the court. So one can easily say that the crisis in equity is being caused by this group that call themselves E11. And whoever they are, whatever happens in Ekiti, they should be of responsibility for the crisis. Uh, are you saying categorically now that the E11 doesn't have the legal right to contest that case in the court of law? They don't have the legal right to contest the case when the people of Ekiti have spoken. Okay. What I see playing out in Nekiti is a clash, is what we call clash of interest between the people and the elite. It is called a class, a class conflict. Mm. This is what social scientists will call class conflict between the masses and the elite. Okay. The elite felt IODFIC is not competent to lead them. The masses who actually voted yeah. felt this is the man we want. Yeah. Now there's a clash of the interest of the elite and the interest of the electorate. And that is a problem. Okay. So and in deciding who, who carries the day, electoral process is not all about the elite. Neither is it all about the masses. It's all about the entire people. Those who bring themselves forward to decide who leads them? And anybody, even within among the G11, the E11, could have come out to want to lead. That's all right. Let, but, but let's also touch on the election tribunal uh, case. Yes. I understand that it's supposed to last for about 100, not more than 120 days. 180, question, 180 days. 180 days. Yes. My question earlier was, is it possible that the tribunal could have given a verdict? before October 16. The election was held when? That was in July. Mm. It was held in July. August has passed. September has passed. By October, 180 days would have uh, not passed. But it was expected that the tribunal, if the tribunal had worked assiduously, that is the election petition tribunal, not a, comp a competent court handling pre-election matters. Because these are two separate things. Mm. If it is pre-election matters, it goes to normal court, regular court. If it is election petition issue, it has a post-election issue, electoral issues that arise at, out of the election, okay. then it now goes to the tribunal. The law has provided that the tribunal must discharge these matters 
simultaneously, and that is 180 days. It does not mean that he must discharge that matter before the governor is sworn in. The whole idea in the spirit of that law is that so that people will not be allowed to exhaust many years in office before they were removed. Okay. The case we had in the case of Chris Ngiga, the case of Shegu Oni, and other cases similar to that in Nigeria. Now, the law has taken that into consideration that within a period of 180 days, which is approximately six months, you must discharge all electoral issues so that the governor, whoever, whoever, whoever that wins and whoever that is affirmed by the court can now sit down and begin the business of governance. Yeah. So, it does not affect the issue of swearing in. But INEC law, the law on electoral issue, the same electoral law which guides the side that involves INEC, provides that election must take place at least three months before the handover date. And that is why this election took place in July, and then there's going to be a handover in October. Okay. Yeah, so these are two different scenarios. There are also issues of whether an appeal, you know, also can serve as a stay of judgment. If, for instance, the court uh, the election tribunal as it been suggested for, in some quarters because the government elect came out publicly to allege some certain infringement on the part of the judiciary and even if the case now is that the the uh, uh, judgment goes against the PDP uh, isn't there a room for appeal at a higher court and does it also serve as a stay of judgment no there's always a room for there's always a room for appeal until you exhaust all the rooms because it does it does not last indefinitely okay if you by time if it is um electoral issue by the time it goes to a court of appeal that's the end but if it is a pre-election matter it can go to as high as supreme court but the position of the governor elect is this that the e11 wants they are not just working for the people of akt they are working for the apc and that the E11 wants to scuttle the mandate given to him by the Akiti people. And so many people who want to see things objectively will feel exactly the same way. Well, you said earlier that the E11 doesn't have the eligibility for that case. So why should why I say, she should be scared of that? No, 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 no. The E11 approached a court. The E11 went to not the tribunal, but to regular court to challenge eligibility of Ayofayo share in court. Okay. And what we are saying is that in law and in equity, they came too late in time. And what they are only trying to do is to create chaos in a kitty state. And the position of the governor-elect is that the chief judge of a kitty state, Justice um, Daramola, he accused him of being a member of the E11. I don't know how true or not that is but that is the direct accusation that the chief judge is a member of e11 and if the chief judge is a member of e11 or has sympathy for e11 that now tells you that there's an, an admixture of politics it's all right with legality we'll get there because the cja uh, aluma Mukhtar in the beginning of this new uh, legal year also indicted the judiciary of being corrupt and thank god we are a part of the judiciary we'll find out if possibly the chief judge could as well influence negatively on that particular case we'll take a break now as we're still trying to reach the chief press secretary of the akita state governor elect ayodele fayoshe by the name ito adeluse he spoke with us earlier and said he will need to confirm from the governor elect if he should be allowed to join us on the show this morning it's called digest live from lagos We'll be back shortly with more. Don't go away. Nigerians continue to Tonight, the city of Lagos points a dark as our roots. Be the first to know from the north, south, east, west, and around Africa. A federal high we course. break the news. One Nigerian. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news breaks. We are Core TV News. Welcome to Core TV. A 24 hour news station. 
also have the journey of another edition of the political arena, the most detailed and incisive political show. If you are a sitting governor and the opposition is able to stomach structure against you, that means you are wicked to the people. They gave me 20 minutes to move or they will shoot me. He has no chance for survival. If he likes himself, this is the best time to get out before it very The PDP as a ruling party has failed. So anybody who thinks that government will fold his hands and allow miscreants to take over the streets of Mosul State and cause havoc is deceiving himself. The good, bad, ugly and beautiful sides of the Nigerian political system. Join me every Sunday at 9.15 p.m. on 40 News. You can now watch Call TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.calltvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. When welcome to Call TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Call TV. Leave a space, then news. Call TV News, a 24-hour news station. Ayofayo she should be solely and primarily held responsible for what is happening in the state. This state has witnessed an unprecedented level of peace over the last four years. I will continue to accord that office all the respect. And I will not want to do issues with him. So, but I don't want to do issues like I said. He owns his mouth to run it if he wants to run it. You understand? Thanks for staying with us on Cool Digest, exclusive to Cool TV News, live from Lagos, AKT Crisis. The on Easy Cam is exactly what we're discussing on the show today. Now, we're trying to reach the Chief Press Secretary to the governor elect. It what did you say? Let's hope that it picks this call. Okay, we're just going to try one more time to see if we can reach him. He, we spoke with him earlier and he said he would need to get confirmation from the governor-elect to know whether to join us on the show this morning. Of course, we spoke earlier with the APC chairman, GDR Way in Ekiti State. Alright, I'm afraid we're going to have to try again later. Fred Ziako, thank you for staying in the course of the show thank you. today. Now, uh, Aloma Mukhtar said that the judiciary is corrupt. And that exactly has been one of the reasons why we have over half of the inmates in Nigerian prisons awaiting trial. From court clerks to secretaries, delays here and there. Another dimension to it that evolved after that revelation is that some lawyers and some stakeholders even get to know what the verdict of the court will be before actual judgment. Now, how does all of this relate to the Akiti case? Because the judgment concerning the E11 case is not out in the open air yet. How did some parties get to feel or start reacting in this way that the judgment is not going to favor them. Uh, let me correct you um, on your sweeping misunderstanding of the <laughs> position of the Leonard CJN. Okay. Uh, wherein you said that the judiciary is corrupt. That you are misquoting the Leonard CJN. What is she said was that some judges are corrupt. Okay. And it is natural that you expect some people to be corrupt. If some judges are corrupt, uh, some let me also is, take you quickly no, it on is natural that. That If some judges, judges are corrupt, corrupt. Because some Nigerians, you know I'm saying that mm. Nigeria is corrupt. There are very credible, very good Nigerians that 
are very, very far from corruption. Okay. So it is always good to qualify such statements. Some judges are corrupt, no doubt about it. Okay. Some lawyers also are corrupt, no doubt about it. Some litigants are corrupt, no doubt about it. Some Nigerians are corrupt. And all over the world, some people are corrupt. But the issue is this. What measures are put in place by the state to not only curb corruption, but to punish corrupt practices? Now, if you relate corruption to the issue at stake in the state, mm -hmm. everything is still at the realm of conjecture because of political interests between one party and another. Because of political interests between uh, one group of individuals and another. And even as we speak, I earlier told you that what I analyze and what I see that is playing out in Nekiti is a, an issue of class struggle between the people and the elite. It is obvious that 97% of the voters in Nekiti who voted for Ayo Fayoshe are the masses. The 3% that form the elite class are the ones who now feel that this man is not polished enough by their own estimation, by their own standard, by their own self or personal judgment, that Ayo Fayoshe is not polished enough to be their governor. But democracy is all about numbers. Democracy is all about the people. It is not all about the elite. No, it's how, not all about self judgment how? If the people How have said, I'm coming, I'm coming. If the people okay. in the entire 16 local governments of AKT unanimously decided that they want a fire share, nobody else can truncate the wish of the people. So the elite or no elite, they must have to wait for the next four years. And they have to shake their sword and cooperate with their governor, who will become their governor come October 16th, to take over and move equity further. Exactly. Let's get back to my it's question simple. to yeah. you. What is your question? How, how did the council to the PDP, or whatever it is it's called, how did they preempt the judgment of the court? No, 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 no. There was no preemption of judgment. What happened is that the body language of the court was what the people misread. By allowing jurisdiction? No, 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 no. The people misread. I will explain to you. Just listen. The people misread. One, the matter came to court. The CJ, the CJ of the state wanted to assign the, the, the issue to himself. He wanted to sit in judgment. Even when he was being accused by the governor-elect that he is an interested party. And in law, once a judge is being accused of being an interested party in a case, he will decline jurisdiction. It's all right. Just a minute. Let's um, take this call from Lagos. Olabe Lekon. Good morning and welcome to Cold Digest. Hello. Good morning. Go ahead with your contribution, please. Good morning. Good morning. I'm listening from Lagos. I'm a citizen also. It's all right. Go ahead, please, with your contribution. I'm happy with what this party and Lagos are talking about what is going on in Mikiti space. You see, there are people that are behind the problem in Mikiti. It's all right. Thank you, Ola Mileko, for your contribution. Please endeavor to turn down the volume of your TV when you're calling us, and let's keep the conversation on the phone. Now, let's talk about what the NBA has now. Oh, no, you I'm asked you, you, you no, we, were, we, were, we were going somewhere. Exactly. We are, we were asked, you, you asked a question. Mm. How did the, 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 the council on the other side read the, the mind of the court? Mm. There, have, 
they didn't really mind of the court. But what happened is that the people themselves okay. interpreted the body language of the court. Because of the expeditious nature, the court was given the issue. The matter came in, and in 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 very short space of time, there was um, um, an order. The court started giving its opinion on the particular issue. The court started giving an interim order. Then even the preliminary objection brought in by the PDP council was shut down because the council brought a preliminary objection. Now nobody, as we speak, has owned ownership of those talks. And why I say it is a class struggle. Don't forget that the governor will not be the commissioners, he will not be the special advisors, he will not be chairman of chairman of all the local government, all the political appointments in Ekiti State will be manned by different, different people. The governor is only one person. All those other people who felt their interest was being truncated could have as well galvanized the masses against the elite. We'll get to that so, issue. So nobody can come out mm. easily and say it was identified say, that organized. Let us it. quickly take it this call. They are not there. Let's take this call from Daniel. Hello, Daniel. Good morning, Daniel. Hello. Go ahead with the contribution, please. Uh, I just want to thank the man that was speaking right now. You have said all, you have said all. And I will thank you what you have just said. These people are saying this man when he was campaigning. Why is he the time for the man to swipe when these people are now crossing from the country? It's not your time. The first time you went for the first instance, when the man was voted, it is that the government said that was still not that care the congratulations because of the next government. The government has been about to show it. So we now did not have to call the man. It's a bit behind the issue. You should think all this is not good. It should have been to pay. It's not that when you see somebody that wants to sit down, you took us out from there. No cost from there. You have to sit in the line because it's not good. We are now. It's not good to go. Thank you for your contribution, Daniel. Good to hear from you. You, you talked about the presence of the people, yes. you know, at the court premises. Uh, I don't know if there's any law that exists, as we speak now, that deters supporters, political supporters of um, people, stakeholders, you, you know, who have courts or cases to answer in court to follow them to the court premises. The court is a public place. Even though it is a place of sanctity, it is a it is a hallowed room. It is a, a place that should not in any way be desecrated. But it is a public place. Who should now so take anybody, responsibility? Anybody, I'm coming, mm. anybody can approach the court. And usually from experience, political issues usually create a lot of interests among the diverse, the, the, the diverse groups that are interested in the issue. Now, once a political issue is to be decided in a court, as much as the courtroom can take, people are allowed to come and sit. But people must comport themselves with every decorum. You said earlier in your opening remarks that yes. um, the masses in Ekiti yes. voted for Ayodele Fire Shade. The people in the office, and yes. And that um, acquired a number, you know, percentage of the people who are yes. to be the elite voted for the other party. And that from that no, no, I didn't say voted for the other party. Mm. The, 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 the voting pattern, it was obvious to everybody, the voting pattern showed that majority of the masses voted for fire share. So possibly we can now take from that argument of yours that possibly the same masses that voted for, for fire share yes. stormed the court in Adwekiti. Exactly. They wanted to defend their mandate. And at the least they came to support Adwekiti. They Adwekiti. wanted to defend their mandate to the last. Who should take responsibility in 1990, for what is now called the desecration of the Temple of Justice? The people who brought infested firewood to the home that attracted 
the lizard and the, the and the and the mom that attended the lizard are the ones responsible. E11. I am not equivocal about it. Unambiguously and unequivocally, I will lay every blame at the doorsteps of that group called E11. We have a caller from Is that simple as that? Uh, let's take this call from Dio. Good morning, Dio. Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead, Dio. Yeah. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can. Go ahead with your contribution, please. Can you please turn down the volume of your TV? Tayo. We should allow the court to rule and let them declare that, okay, they approve the court late or whatever. We should allow the rule, the rule of law to take its course. Okay, thank you very much, Dio. Dio seemed to see you as sympathetic to our identifier. No, no, we are not trying to arm twist the arm of the, of the law. Mm. We're only analyzing the issues as they, as they happened. I have said earlier that I am not for any violence and anybody who desecrates the temple of justice must be brought to book and punished. That is the way it is done all over the world. But now we are looking at all the surrounding circumstantial issues. You just ask me, who takes the blame for that disagreement? Was Fire Shea at the court at the time of this mob? Are you asking me, you're a journalist, you should know. Uh, you should know as Fire well. Fire said he was not there. That he was not there. That he was not even in Nigeria. And that when he came back from abroad, that he decided to stay in Lagos. So that nobody will accuse him of ruffle any feather in a kitty. I'm He's only waiting way. for his own time to be sworn in so that he goes to... Right now, I would even recommend that he should go on retreat so that he will pull his mental faculties together. Leadership is big business. It's and right. then the people need mentally robust leaders to deliver dividends of democracy. You so see, these unnecessary distractions mm. and um, talk, and talk of war here and there should not be happening in the KT state. I'm caught in between, I'm caught in between the two arms of the bulls now. That you yeah. said, why not allow the court yes. to decide? Yes. Initially I said the judiciary is corrupt, you said no. So uh, which one do we do? On one part you're saying the judge is compromised, on the other part, you're saying the judiciary is not corrupt. I never, I, never, I never said that the judge is compromised. I never said so. Because I wouldn't have even said so because I don't have the facts. You insinuated that. I never insinuated so. I never it's insinuated it's so. All right. I said is that some judges are corrupt. And that was trying to explain the position of the learned CJM. Okay. That some judges are corrupt. And particular about the chief judge in Ekiti now. We are not. Leonard CJN has not said that the chief judge in Ekiti is corrupt. No, no, no. no. And neither I have think, I said. No, 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 no. Nobody has no, no, said no, no, no. that. I think you're getting me wrong, Eziako. I'm no, actually no. referring to what Dyer said. Because okay. initially, you were of the opinion that the reason why the, reason why the counsel to the PDP is apprehensive about all of this is the position that the court in Ekiti is taking, given jurisdiction to no, this no, case. No, 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 no. You don't seem to be understanding me. It's all right. Please matter. make me understand. Yes, on this matter. It is not even the, the counsel to PDP that is the problem. It's all right. The problem is the people. The people that stormed the court, I told you that the people misinterpreted the body language of the court. Don't forget that the so-called masses, a lot of them are graduates, a lot of them even know one or two things about the law. So you, you are not leading morons. We are talking about people who know their left from their right and people who have spoken soundly about who they want to lead them. Look, I always am in support of the sanctity of the electorate do you have faith, and the sanctity of Fred, the mandate. Do you have faith in the Federal High Court sitting in Adwokiti as regards the E11 case? I'm coming. I'll answer you that. In 1993, when Moshe Dabiola's mandate was denied him, nobody asked Nigerians to pour onto the streets to riot and to demonstrate okay. because of the sanctity of that mandate. It is that sanctity of the mandate that led to the death of Moshe Dabiola. 
because he held on to it. And that is why, till the end of life, he will always be remembered as the hero of Nigerian democracy because he paid the supreme price to ensure that there is democracy, that there is rule of law, and there is freedom for the people. So it is something that you don't toy with. And it is the same thing that is gradually playing out in Ekiti State. Do you have the people now poured onto the streets in Ekiti State to demonstrate against the, what they perceive as a repeat of the treatment of Mochuda. I'm Adam asking you again. On the, I'm, I'm coming. As on, a their, on their own candidate. Now, mm. back to your question. You are insisting on my comparing Federal High Court with State High Court. What is your question? No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm asking you if you yes. have faith in the court sitting in Ekiti State as regards the E11 case. Why wouldn't I have faith in the court? You believe in the judge as a that lawyer? is sitting on that case? No, why wouldn't I have faith in the court? I have faith in the court. I do not believe in the judge. Because sometimes I go to court, the judge may give wrong judgment by my own estimation, by my own opinion, and that is why I go upstairs. It is that feeling that you have not received what you felt you should receive. And then you need to ventilate such feeling, and that is why there is appeal and up to the second level of the Supreme Court. So the issue of whether you cannot have the faith, reaction of you the cannot mob. have faith in the judge, mm. but you should have faith. In the judiciary, the the reaction of the mob in Ekiti, the people yes. now being referred to as political thug, is it a case of lacking faith or total disregard and disrespect for the court of law, the or a sheer faith and yeah. belief in a particular political cause? The people who poured onto the streets, many of them, in fact, I can tell you that ninety nine percent of them are not lawyers, so. They don't understand the language you speak in the court. What they understand is that, hey. Or could it be that they don't believe hey, in this the is court? Hey, these people want to, these people want to enter, these people want to remove our governor and then continue. These people want to, so many interpretations. There have even been accusations that the speaker, that they're angling for the speaker to become the acting governor. If I say he denied swearing in come October 16. And then if, by or their own interpretation, if peradventure the court gives an injunction or gives an order suspending the swearing in of Fayeshe, what do you think will happen? There is no vacuum in governance. Somebody must be sworn in, even on acting capacity. Assuming the court wakes up for one reason or the other, either being convinced of the position of the E11 or for political reason or for political motive or, or for whatever reason. And says, Governor uh, elect uh, should not be sworn in pending the determination of the suit at hand, right? Of the substantive suit. What that means is that you cannot swear him in until that Russell, order. Please, I'm please, coming. I'm coming. Okay. Until that mm -hmm. order is vacated, and vacation of such order can only come from court of appeal. Let me hold you because for a the court becomes functus officio once you have delivered that opinion. Hello, Benga. How are you today? Hello, Benga, are you there? Hello? Benga, go ahead with your contribution, please. All right, all right, please. Uh, I want to ask that speaker, whether Dori will meet by us, uh, fire me, fire me is being in court with crowd. Are the crowd supposed to be the judges? Are they going to give the verdict? And secondly, has the verdict been given that people are protesting against? Those are the questions. Can you go over that again? Oh, oh you got this question. Because he believes in the sanctity of the court. And he trusts that the justice will be given, either in favor of him or not in favor of him. Now that uh, trial chief has led trial to the, uh, to the court premises to destroy even his two legal documents. That were accepted by judges has now vindicated them as the winner of the election. Can't you make the tribunal give judgment before people can go onto the street? People don't go to court to fight, they go to the street to protest. This man is comparing our action against, not uh, uh, in the case of uh, Abiola, to this. Like, like, nobody invaded Asorok. Nobody invaded Asorok. It was when MPO was. 
I'm afraid we lost that Benga, but uh, uh, did you hear that? People don't protest to the court, they protest to the streets. Why did they take it to the court? Did I send them there? Oh, come on, man. I was no, asking no, you to react yeah. to that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Why are you taking it People personal, Fred? People should be very, very focused and understand the issue. Okay. The issue is this. Because court is a public place, you don't determine who comes there and who does not. People are not supposed to go and protest in the court. The court is a place of sanctity it's all right. and must not be desecrated. And as we speak, Nobody has owned ownership of those talks. I have given an analysis that it is not only Fayoshe that has interest in October 16th inauguration. All the people who will be commissioners, special advisors, special assistants, chairman of corporations, chairman of local government, and everything, everybody has interest in ensuring that Fayoshe becomes the governor come October 16th. Any of them could have ignited the letting loose of anybody. And meanwhile, the people themselves, I, why I made a comparison of between what is happening and what happened in 1993, is that you cannot tell me that anybody ignited the people's passion to come to the street and fight. Whenever people vote, that mandate must be held sacrosanct. That mandate must not be toyed with because it is the wish of the people Mosul well, Dabiola died for that mandate. And I tell you that first will fight with the last drop of his blood for the mandate. Let me hold Give you. it to him. Let, by me, his let me hold you there. We have BC calling from Mosugo. Good morning, BC. Are you there? Yes, yes. Please go ahead with the contribution. Uh, good morning. This is from Mosugo. Go ahead, please. To that matter. I, I, are you hearing me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. We can. <laughs> this man is on the street. He's a kind part of PDC. And I like him. We know the people for intelligent, very, very intelligence. And we are very, very low abiding people. It is right in this country. As we are so... Uh, we, are, we, are, we are calling ourselves giants of Africa. Is it right for somebody to go outside the court and, and fight the judge? You know, I can fight this. This, this one is a, it, it, it's not, it's not a good precedent at all in this nation. Because I never heard of it in this country. This is the first time people will be uh, uh, the so called, uh, or the, the, uh, the, the, the governor elect will lose somebody. He let somebody to go to the court premises and fight. It's not, it, 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 it's, not a, it's not a good thing at all. If you know that you are the one that people want, yes, why can't you let the court, the judge, to prevail? That is what that is my contribution. It's all right. Thank you very much, BC, for your contribution from Oshobo. Good to hear from you. Now, now let's push this higher from here because we'll be rounding up in the GFI now. Uh, well, you had the APC spokesperson, who happens to be the chairman of APC in the Kitty State, GDI yes. And I categorically asked him about the position of the APC as regards the handing over ceremony in October. That was a brilliant question he asked. And he said that the status quo, they, ex they expect the status quo to remain. What is the status quo? Handing over to the PDP. Then that's not the status quo. The, the, uh, when you say status quo, the status quo is the, the situation as at now. What I understand from his statement is that he expects that what should be done should be done. And that means that handover should take place come October 16th. Yeah. Yes. Exactly what I'm saying. No, we are not saying <laughs> Exactly what I was saying. <laughs> I, I am just trying to say that if the APC expects and handover come October 16th, yes. which GDI were categorically said while I you know, talked with him on the phone. Yes. What's all this frenzy about? The whole frenzy, look, we, we cannot claim, the, not, the, those of us who are not politicians, it is not the way we reason that politicians reason. The politician is suspicious of the moves of his opponent at every step. Suspicious. I'm not speaking for fire share. Neither am I speaking for PDP. But I tell you 
that from my own analysis and understanding as a social scientist of who the politician is, the mindset of the people of the, the, the people who attack the court, their mindset is that if they don't take any action, even if it is illegal, that somebody may give an opinion that will suspend the swearing in of their governor. That is their mindset. In that case, let us attack them. As wrong and as dastardly as that action is, that is their mindset. A Boko Haramist who took bomb to go and commit suicide is all about mindset. And that is why we always enjoin leaders to lead by example and tell their followers what is right. That's all right. L let me hold you for another minute. PC Okoro is calling from Emo State. Good morning, Okoro. Hello, are you there? Hello. Please go ahead with your contribution. Yeah, good morning. Good morning to you. Yes, I'm calling from Emo State. I'm listening to your discussion over there. But my problem now is that I, I, I'm not all right wearing traffic in, in Nigeria where we are celebrating 54 years of um, independence. You see, uh, uh, we used to say a fool at 40 is a fool forever. Nigeria is, have, is, is, has become uh, 64 years. We never achieved anything, rather, crisis everywhere. We're supposed to talk of peace. We're supposed to talk of how the Nigeria will go forward. That is my own idea, my contribution. Please talk how the Nigeria, since 360, when the Nigeria will become independent, since 61, Everywhere in the in the in the country, we are not all right. That's a time they said to press control, press control. There was crisis. That's a time they said other um, uh, things. Coming to politics, I suggest that if one party passed. The other party should allow that uh, party who has to rule and wait for his own turn, not to break crisis. And this crisis can become much here in Nigeria. It, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like it. I'm an elder in the church. That's what I'm asking the people concerned to, to, to rule with the fear of God. If I used to say now, the people who are ruling now, it is the same people. Thank you very much, Koro, for your contribution, your independence message to Nigeria. Uh, is there any law whatsoever that restricts a governor who has been impeached to contest again? No, there's no uh, such law because impeachment is a political process. Impeachment is merely political and administrative. It is not criminal in nature, okay. except if criminality or criminal prosecution follows the impeachment. And then if a governor is found guilty, the law has made provision that if somebody is found guilty of financial misappropriation, there are some number of years the person must stay in the cooler before coming back to contest. So as long as he's not found guilty of financial um, uh, 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 malfeasance, then he's not, uh, he's not uh, bad from contesting. And that brings to question the issue of our, 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 our judicial system. How come seven years down the line, Fashe was impeached in 2006, October 2006. 
October 2014 will make it eight years. And the issues against Fireshare brought by EFCC have not been discharged. So if anybody thinks that we are living in the, in the Mars, then the person is not telling himself the truth. Let's take that this call we have problem in our system. Hello, Mohammed. Yes. Hello. Good morning. Go yeah. ahead with the contribution. Good, yeah, good morning. Hello. Good morning to you. Go ahead. We can hear you. Yeah, good morning. Please, I want to, I just want to make my comment then. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Yeah, please and please. I'm just begging the both of them, please. Let them make a peace. Make it instead, because everybody in Nigeria know what is the not easy is, is going through. So please and please, I'm just begging them. EKT is a very peaceful state everybody know. Look at the way Fire should get the victory last the election and I immediately fire me congratulate him. And I will never see that in Nigeria. The opposition, if you did it, then somebody can congratulate you. Even that one is a plus. Please and please, I'm just begging them. Let them make everything possible. Let them be the poor men in EKT state. Please and please. Thank you. Good morning. Thank it's all right. Thank you very much, Mohammed from Abuja, and happy independence to you. Uh, well, I'm just wondering what, because you made mention about the judiciary system. Yes. Is this same system that brought Fire Ming to power, you know, who got the power, reached the power from the court, from yes. the PDP to the ABC? Yes. Why wouldn't Ekiti people at this time, you know, have the same faith that brought that justice to fire me. What happened over that little period of time? It is not, now? it is not, it is anachronistic to mount leadership through the court. Mm. It is not normal. It is an abnormal situation. The normal situation is that leadership must be decided at the polling board, mm. at the point of voting. It's only when the situation becomes terrible that the courts come in to remedy a bad situation. That's what the court does, to remedy a bad situation. The situation must be made good by ensuring that there is credibility in the electoral process so that whoever the people decide becomes their leader. Even if that person does not have hand or leg, even if the person is anything. There was a prime minister of Britain that was on wheelchair. There was a leader of U.S. states that had one hand. The people decided, and he led them well. Whoever, that is why I talk about the sanctity of the vote. Whenever the people decide, it is the duty of the system to ensure that that process of decision is free, fair, and credible, flawless. And once it is the decision of the people, so be it. Don't toy with it. Don't try to, 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 to undermine it. Because any attempt at undermining the decision of the people will only lead to anarchy and chaos. That's all right. And that is exactly what we are seeing in Egypt. The people felt that they are, they are being undermined. And without being prompted, they started demonstrating and started rioting. It's, it's all right. Uh, let's just have your final you know, comments on this. What should be the role of politicians in ensuring that peace and tranquility is the order of the day in this part of the Nigeria is a growing democracy. Nascent by the estimation of politicians who don't want a uh, rapid growth. But by those of us, our estimation is that Nigeria should enter the first lane mm -hmm. and grow rapidly. The politician has a role to play. Much as we agree that the duty, or rather the intention of every politician, or rather the, 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 the wish of every politician is to win. But only one can win at a time. Only one group can be in power at a time. It is now the duty of the system to ensure that the process that throws up that leader is credible. And that is why I will always ask INEC to be on top of the situation. In this case, INEC discharged his duties creditably. And Governor Fayemi, for the first time in Nigeria's political history, has rewritten the electoral process. Mm. And Nigerians will ever 
remain grateful for him to have put that signpost that there can be gallantry in defeat. Mm. There can be a magnanimity in winning. And then you shake hands with the winner because everybody it's is a, a passenger. Mm. It's a sportsmanship. Everybody is a passenger in this nation. Mm. The country will continue to run and everybody will exit. Younger generations will come. He has put in, uh, he has put his name on the sand of time. Okay. And I want to urge those who are pushing this crisis in Ekiti to respect that gentleman called Dr. John Kayede Fayemi. And I want to encourage him to distance himself from this crisis in Ekiti. It's just that as a state chief executive, he has to do what he has to do to maintain law, order, and continue with his good governance till the last day. At all times, he remains my man. And I want to believe that that is why the Committee on National Honors had chosen him for national award and honors. He robustly deserves such honor and such award. And we'll continue to give him accolades for writing the history of the Nigerian political system. Those who are coming out late in time to truncate the system must be warned to remove the monkey hand they are trying to throw into the pot of soup <laughs> in equity. Not even at this time there is Ebola. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Fred Zeko, for joining us on Core Digest today. is a legal practitioner as well as a veteran public affairs analyst. That's our show today. A big thank you to everyone that made it happen. My producer, Emmanuel. Ajay. I am Nifebi Oguto. Tomorrow, Nigeria will be 54. We're throwing the party here already, and it's going to be called the Ajay Special as we begin to bring you the core and the in depth review and analysis of this dear country at 54 tomorrow. Don't miss it. Join us again tomorrow, and of course, stay tuned for the top of the Arnies in a few minutes. Nigerians continue to Tonight, the city of Lagos points and dark as all rules. Be the first to know from the north, south, east, west and around Africa. Our federal high we post. break the news. We are one Nigerian. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news Thank breaks. We are Call TV News. Welcome to Call TV. Our 24-hour news station.